uh, Mr. Ido Aroni from the Foreign Ministry of Israel, head of the brand management team. Basically, we've heard quite a focus on, on the conflict, on the current conflict, and I believe your idea has a different, different take. Well, not so different. Um, I think you'll be surprised that we all agree in the end of this discussion. Um, but let me begin with a story I heard uh, recently in France from a French friend. He said to me, here's a story that I heard which I found to be very amusing. I'd like to tell it to you as an Israeli. Three Israelis arrive at the Charles de Gaulle airport in France. They approach the immigration officer. He asks them nationality. They say Israeli. He then turns to them and asks occupation. They look at one another and they say, no, thank you. We're here just for three days. <laughs> this is Israel's personality, whether we like it or not. Every place has a brand. Israel has a brand, too. A brand can be a very strong brand and can be a detriment. Every place has a DNA, just like a human being, a personality. Brazil is about fun, and Paris is about romance, and Las Vegas is about sin. We set out to explore the question, if Paris is about romance, then Israel is about what? And what we discovered was very interesting. We discovered that universally, with the exception of maybe Japan, where they really have no concept of the conflict, but universally, Israel's DNA is about the conflict, and the context within which Israel is being perceived is all about bad news. Whether you agree with Israeli policies or not, it's irrelevant. Even our biggest supporters are unable to relate to us. The proof is that the overwhelming majority of American Jews never been to Israel, not even once. Yet, they are huge supporters of Israeli policies. Every research shows that. So we asked ourselves, okay, what do we need to do and what's the problem? We identified the problem with the fact that Israel, when Israel is given an opportunity to communicate itself to the world, the only thing that Israel does traditionally since its very inception is to communicate its positions vis-a-vis -vis the conflict. It's in every realm, politics, even in literature. When you look at the Israeli writers when they travel abroad, they talk about the conflict frequently. We are, you know, in business management, this is called crisis management. We excel in crisis management, and that's a good thing. But the problem is that we're doing nothing other than crisis management. Crisis management, while important to stabilize a critical situation, can never produce the leapfrogging that you're looking for. We conducted a series of, of um, massive and comprehensive research in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, um, the kind of research that was never conducted before. This was about a year ago. And we searched for the, for the kind of narrative that the world will find to be both attractive and authentic, and that will be able to cope and correspond effectively with the unhappy geopolitical circumstances that we all live in, vis-a-vis -vis the conflict. This is not an easy task. And basically what we discovered is that in most countries, the overwhelming majority of people are not interested in what we have to say about the conflict. Let me give you an example. If you'll ask the average Israeli, what's the most anti-Israel country in, in Europe, they'll tell you France. Well, we turn to the French people and we ask them, when it comes to the conflict, where do you stand? 16% of the people in France support the Palestinians. Only 9% support the Israelis. You put them together, you get 25% of the French people that bothered to take a stand. 75% did not even bother to take a stand on this issue. Now, while we know very little about them, about those 75%, we know one thing for sure. They're not interested in what we have to say about the conflict, yet the only thing we communicate to them is Israel's position vis-a-vis -vis the conflict. And we believe in this old paradigm called Hasbara, we believe that by making a cold, clinical, historical, legal, factual arguments, we can build relationships. Let me tell you, it's not going to work. This is not a relationship builder. You can use the case for Israel as long as you want, 
This is not going to create the emotional tie that you're looking for. What will? You have to restore, and I use the word restore rather than create, restore Israel's relevance in the world by communicating Israel's success, by identifying Israel's relative advantages, and then begin a long-term strategic celebration of those relative advantages. And, as you, and I'm glad that you mentioned, Mr. Joffe, the book, uh, The Startup Nation, because Startup Nation is a, um, is a beautiful case study that proves the point. When Israel is telling a story that is relevant, then the product delivers. And Israel is a great product. Don't make any mistake. Israel is a great product. If you look at lifestyle and leisure, the environment, high-tech and science, uh, art and culture, uh, the people, the heritage, the, the, the variety of, of, of the diversity of the Israelis, and of course Israel's international aid programs. We have great story to tell, but when we're given a chance, the only thing that we do is discuss the conflict, and it's a turn-off even amongst our biggest supporters. Thank you. Thank you very much.